Well, hey guys, welcome back. We got back uh, after two weeks on the Buffalo. Uh, it was kind of nice. I, we enjoyed it. It was different. Uh, no phone service, uh, no television. I had to run a cord up in a tree just to pick up the radio to try to get some weather information with a storm that had came through. But uh, I want to talk to you today about blogging or a blogger or a vlogger, as I guess I am, a journalist and a reporter. There's quite an argument going on that uh, bloggers and vloggers are not journalists. And I don't know what would make the difference. Uh, journalists seem to think is, is they uh, are not opinionated. They are trying to give it to you uh, very fair and balanced, which uh, I don't know of one that I've seen in probably maybe 30 years. Um, it used to be that some journalists would be really good and be uh, not put their opinion. They just give you the facts on both sides and let you make your own. And there may be some journalists out there now, or reporters out there that do that, but chances are they are not uh, part of a news network or a news channel that, that follows those rules. So it kind of makes, to me, it defeats the, the reasoning behind them doing it if they're going to be on a network or a channel that definitely has their opinions and, and it's one-sided. So um, one reason why I'm bringing this up is I'm, I'm going to go over some of the laws on recording because that's, you know, that's the big thing with me is recording and uh, recording conversations with the mic or recording video and what rights you have uh, as a person being videotaped or recorded and the rights that I have being a um, someone that makes videos uh, and, and this may pertain to a lot of you out there that do make videos or if you don't maybe you're concerned about people videotaping you. I, I know that uh, police departments around the country are putting up um, you know, cameras on poles and things of this nature and people don't like it. They think it's a violation of their privacy, but the law says, no, it's not. Uh, so really it's all based on where you're at when you're doing the video. If, if you being recorded feel like that you have an expectation of privacy where you're at, uh, it could be very well that you're breaking the law. Now, I can record a conversation between two people as long as one of the two people in the conversation know it's being recorded. I can record a conversation between uh, someone else and myself as long as I know it's being recorded and if I'm recording it, you know. And that's with a hidden recorder. That's not with one pulled out. If, if it's out and it's setting out visible, then the person that's being interviewed, that's kind of complied consent that they you know, know it's there. Or if I've got a camera on a tripod and I'm videotaping people, they should know it's there. Uh, it's, it's when you start doing things like hiding the camera in a small hole in the wall. Now you can do this. If it's your own property, you can do this, but you cannot have any audible going on with it. So if, if you're a laundromat owner and you've got a laundromat that keeps getting the machines broke into and you put a camera up to videotape, that camera cannot have sound because if you're recording a conversation between two people sitting there doing their laundry, they don't know uh, that it's being recorded and you can't do that. But you can videotape with a camera. You can do that because they don't have a expectation of privacy. They're in a laundromat. They shouldn't have that. So that's when you start getting into those gray areas. Really, it's not gray, it's black and white, but you need to know where you're at and what you're doing when you're being videotaped. Um, normally what I do is a, is a uh, rule of thumb is I look at where I'm standing. If I'm standing in a public place, something that is owned by um, the federal government, uh, the city uh, or the state, uh, I record all I want. I know some people get upset when I'm doing this because I've had them to approach me about it. But my problem is, is in, in the last, well, I've, I've only been to six different parks. Three were state parks. All three of them, state parks, were in Louisiana. Then I was at uh, three federal operated parks, two by the Corps of Engineers and one by the National Park Service. And what's ironic to me is, is one out of three, <laughs> One out of the three state parks, I was approached by people that didn't like the fact that I was recording. Uh, I, I didn't try to, you know, be rude to them and, and just make them feel uncomfortable. I was just recording the surroundings. 
I was standing on property owned by the state, which is okay because it's you know it's not a it's not a violation if you do that. But then when the police came, one police officer in Louisiana, which was a park police officer, a law enforcement officer, I grant you, carrying a firearm, he told me I had to quit doing it. And apparently he hadn't been trained uh, to know the law, which he should. I, I don't know why he wouldn't, because this doesn't only pertain to people doing vlogging like me. It also has to do with the fact that he has to use those same skills in arresting someone. He has to be able to be where he's supposed to be to arrest someone, just like I have to be where I'm supposed to be when I'm videotaping someone. And I'll give you some examples of that later on. I'm hoping to do several videos on this because it's going to cover a lot, and I hope you enjoy it. And maybe this uh, help. I've actually got the state-by-state -state laws for you. I can show them to you, give you a link. I'm not going to waste your time with it and read it to you. I can give you a link so you can look up your state and you'll know exactly what's going on. The second time it happened to me, it happened at Buffalo Point at the National Park. A tree had fell during the storm. I was telling you about that. I was trying to get the information on. A tree had fell during the night and it fell across two tents. Uh, one tent was the mom and dad sleeping and the tent next to it was a young boy. He looked like he was maybe about 11, something like that. And the tree actually almost hit the boy. One of the other camp the next morning when the sun came up, one of the other campers had told me about it and they had already cut up the tree and used a chainsaw and of course I never heard it because I was inside the camper with air conditioners going, but they'd already removed the tree. But they did have a, about a, a lot of cleanup. Uh, the family was trying to get all their stuff together because it was all soaking wet. The tents were just destroyed. I'll try to put some clips in here if I can so let you see what I'm talking about. Um, I'm videotaping, everything's fine, no problem whatsoever. Uh, matter of fact, the father even spoke. I showed him enough courtesy not to film him, you know, his face, and or film, just film his family, because they were shocked. They were just thankful that their son wasn't hurt, or they weren't hurt. And I kind of point the camera up at the sky, you know, while I'm talking to him, which is back to recording now. I'm recording his conversation with him. As long as one person knows it's being recorded, it's fine. But you, you'll you be able to tell by some of the video. I'll, I'll play some of the audio and the video, because like I say, I'm pointing it up toward the trees. And you'll see where I give him all the respect in the world. He knew I had a camera, had a big boom mic on the front of it. He, he knew what I was doing. He knew I was videotaping. And, um, and I was nice enough not to point it at him, point it straight up, and I'm asking him questions. So which one's your son that was in the tent? Right there. The, one the, big the, boy in the big boy in the middle? Yeah. God, William Molly. He didn't even hear it. He didn't. <laughs> no. I'm surprised not everybody came around because we were screaming. I bet. I didn't hear it. I was inside that camper with that air conditioner. Right. And I couldn't hear nothing, you know. What time, about what time was it? 10, 10 30. Man. And he's, you know, he's wanting to participate in the conversation. It wasn't like I was. You know, being rude to him, but the wife, his his wife, uh, got upset because I was videotaping their items, and I did. I, I I stood back and I did a pan of the items that were out. Uh, I even I even videotaped the wife and a friend picking up the tents with the bent poles. Um, but that's okay. I'm standing on the road in a national park, and there is five gentlemen trying to clear a limb that had been broke off by this tree. Uh, three of them were maintenance, uh, two of them was law enforcement. One of the law enforcement was carrying a firearm. I assumed that four of them was maintenance, but then after talking to the uh, one of the maintenance guys, he goes, no, the other guy was law enforcement. He seemed to be the one that wanted to be in charge, this tall guy that was in law enforcement. He said, no, he is law enforcement. He is actually a, a national park ranger with a firearm, but he wasn't wearing it that day because he was just there helping you know, clean up the, the debris and stuff. So. Uh, the ranger hears this lady saying don't film our stuff and the ranger comes over to me and tells me I've got to stop filming and I explained to him real quick I said no I don't I'm in a public place this is public property so then he's he said okay well you just need to move back because this is a construction area we don't want to see you get hurt and I said oh no problem man so I moved back you know but then he also tells me quit videotaping you can't do this and I'm like yes I can uh, he didn't pursue it I didn't either he acted like he was really mad at me uh, all I was really in my mind was is I'm going to do a video on how it, you should be aware of the trees around you when you're camping because it, it can happen. They call them widow makers uh, in a lot of videos you'll see that. You know, actually for about three days I didn't even want a video. I, I was getting really upset about how this has happened to me twice. <laughs> I mean I could actually 
file a lawsuit against my civil rights uh, because this is this is the cool part is I've got it all on tape. I've got I've got the officers all telling me I can't do this. I'm not that kind of person. I wouldn't do that. I mean it's it's kind of like these what I always call as ambulance chasers that you see. They're always the ones that advertise on the back of the phone book or the little insert that folds out like you know the center of Playboy and it's got their pictures and you know if you've been injured call us you know. So getting back to the fact that the difference between a blogger a blogger or a reporter or a journalist the rules are all the same there's no difference none whatsoever we all have the same rules we have to follow now being a journalist or a reporter might give you credentials to get into a meeting that the public's not invited to but they would allow you to come in so that you could do a story on it so it does give you some perks but it doesn't give you any perks when it comes to the law now, one thing, this is one thing that you'll see in every state, and it's called video voyeurism, all right? Hope I'm saying that right, voyeurism. Uh, the Arkansas Department of Corrections, I think at this time, has 30 inmates in prison for video voyeurism. And what that is, is for an example, I don't know what these guys did, but it, this is an example. It would be like putting a camera in a bathroom or putting a camera in a place that is really, you know, private, just things that you shouldn't shouldn't do, you know, and uh, and there's laws against it. You can go to prison, and and we all understand that. I mean, that's just downright just stupid, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Especially if they're going to do it and put it out on the internet so everybody else can see it and get caught. I mean, that's just pure idiots. If you're being videotaped, even if you're sitting in your camp, now you have rented that space. That is your space. I can't be going on that space for any reason at all, but I can stand in the street and videotape you sitting at your camp. Now, if you go in your tent and I zoom in and try to shoot through the window, that's a different story because now you believe you have the expectation of privacy. When you're standing outside your tent, you do not have that expectation. Why do people have releases signed so much? Well, it's for this reason. Let's say you're going to shoot a, a, a series like <laughs> Doomsday Preppers, and you take and you want to videotape this family. They're going to ask for releases because later on when they put a spin on the story and make you look like a blooming idiot, and you want to raise Cain about it and say, hey, I didn't give them the right to do that, they have a document that says you did too. So that's why you want to be careful signing any kind of releases because usually something's going on there. Now, and not always, not always, but let's say that maybe later on, you know, you, let's say they shot it and, and put you out there and it took them eight months to get it on the air and you pass away and your family says, hey, we don't want our father or mother or the, the one that passed away to be on any kind of show. Uh, most places will be respectful enough to not do that. Uh, they will edit it and make it to where it don't. But if it's a very important part of their story, they will pull out a document and say, look, he signed a release and we're going to do it anyway. If I'm at a beach and there's 500 people or 50 people or 10 people, I'm not going to walk around and ask each one of them, do you care if I videotape you? And if they say no, one of them does, then I've got to figure out how to shoot around them. They have no expectation of privacy if they're on a national river on the beach swimming. So guys, thanks again for watching and I will get some more videos out about this subject.